Hi, I'm Ray, G4NSJ. Aerials for basically shortwave listening. I get asked quite often, what sort of aerial do I need? I've got a communications receiver or, or even an old vintage you know, wooden radio with shortwave on. What sort of aerial do I need? Uh, basically, a, a general coverage aerial is just a bit of wire out of the window, down the garden, wherever, as long as you can get it, really and as high up in the open. The problem is, when you bring a wire into a room like this, if you bring it in through the window, around here, down there, around here, into your communications receiver, it could be picking up interference from the room itself. So there's a thing called an un, -un unbalanced to unbalanced, which I want to tell you about. Now you can transmit on this, I have, I've got this sort of set up, I've got a 100 foot end fed wire with an un, -un and then coax to the transceiver. I do transmit on it and it is quite successful, but I'm talking today mainly about receiving. Shortwave listeners, they want a general coverage aerial that will go from kind of long wave up to 30 megs. General coverage. And uh, the best way to do it, of course, is to have an ATU, an aerial matching unit, say on your windowsill where the aerial comes into the room and then coax to your receiver. The trouble is with that, you have to keep going over there and adjusting the matching unit, the ATU. You change frequency, you change bands, you've got to go and adjust it for maximum signal on your receiver. So you don't have to do all that. You just want a general coverage aerial for long, medium and short wave. My aerial, my in-fed aerial comes in over there by the window. I don't want the wire traips all around here. There's an LED light, there's all sorts, there's a charger, picking up interference from everywhere. That's just not gonna be a good thing at all. So, let me just put this round here. People in the past have said, can I, hang on a minute, can I take coax from my radio right long length of coax right round to the window then fix the inner to my aerial like that yes it'll work it will work the only thing is you're going to have quite a mismatch and you might get where this mismatch is here i mean at the end of the arrow it depends on the length and the frequency that you're on on your radio to listen to okay this could be 100 ohms impedance, you know, that's, that's the feed impedance of the aerial, it could be 2000. And you're putting it straight into a bit of 50 ohm coax. Now, as I said, yes, it will work, but it's not going to be ideal. It'll work well, keeping interference out of this, especially if you go, say, up from here into the attic, across the attic to under the, the gutter where the eaves are, then have your wire out there. At least this isn't picking up all the house wiring interference up in the attic. So we want the coax coming through the attic, through the house, wherever, so it doesn't pick up interference. But what we don't want is the huge mismatch here. So this is an idea. Look at this photo here. I don't know what that noise was in the street. Sorry about that. This is an un, -un U N U N, unbalanced to unbalanced. Okay. The end of a piece of wire, this is your end fed wire, mine's 100 feet, that is unbalanced. If it was a dipole, there's your two sections of your dipole fed in the middle, all right? That's two, the, say the coax outer and the coax inner. That is balanced. The trouble is the coax is unbalanced. So you would need, you'd need here a bal un, a balan, balanced to unbalanced where the coax joins the dipole. What we're doing, we've got the end of a piece of wire, which is unbalanced. And we've got the end of a piece of coax, coax is unbalanced, we want to join those two. So we fit the, the un-un, which is basically a transformer, between those two. What it does, is not changing balance to unbalanced or unbalanced to balance, it's unbalanced to unbalanced. But what it does, it lowers, this might be, I don't know, 1,000 ohms. Put in your nine to one un, un it lowers that. It lowers it so it's closer to the 50 ohm coax that you're using. 
Now it's going to be, as I said, depends on the length of wire that your aerial is. It depends on the frequency you're on. All these things make a difference to the whatever the feed impedance will be. So the un un brings the whole thing down within some reasonable sort of range to match the coax. It's far from perfect, but it's far better than just a bit of wire straight into the radio. So what we're doing is two things, making it a better match to the coax and with this coming into the house instead of the aerial, reducing interference from house wiring. Now the nine to one un un reduces the feed impedance here down uh, by a factor of nine okay so if it's say this is 450 ohms here just for example 450 ohms would come down to 50 ohms which is the coax it could be a thousand ohms but it will always reduce it by a factor of nine if you see what I mean so it's worth doing especially as I said something like this receiving area here if I've got to bring a wire in, so I've got to bring it in from the back garden, across the attic, and then down here, it's all past the house wiring and everything. You're far better to use this. And yes, I, I use my 100 foot end fed uh, to transmit on. Not that often, but it's a bit of a backup error. It's mainly for receiving, but I do transmit on it. Bringing the coax in, I'm not radiating in here. I'm not bringing the aerial wire into this room here because it will be traipsing right across there. I've got RF everywhere. I'm sticking a hundred watts of RF up this. I've got RF all in the room. I don't want that uh, as much as I don't want to receive all the interference in here. There's a fluorescent light fitting up there that uh, can cause interference. I just don't want to pick all that up. So all my aerials that come into here, apart from my doublet, which is ladder line, and that doesn't pick up stuff anyway, they're all coax. The aerials all are outside, not in here, if you see what I mean. Now there's my un, -un on the windowsill there. So the aerial comes in the window into the un, -un. Now the thing is, the wire aerial, if I didn't have the un, -un there, the wire would have to come right across here, all amid this lot, to, that's the transceiver I use it on there, that one. So it's got to come right the way across from the window to there all amongst the wiring and of course if I transmit on it I'm going to have RF everywhere in here it's going to be all over the place which I don't want also if I bring it round to the receiving side which is the other side of the room these are all my receivers again it's got to go right across the room it's even further so it's just going to be a disaster interference wise the unun that you saw on the windowsill there they're for sale on eBay. In fact, a friend of mine made one. He made that. There's a nine to one or four to one. All it is, is a like a toroid with the, the windings around it. Um, I won't go into the details of making this because if you look up on the internet, a ballon or an unun, you've got details of how to make it, the winding, the toroid type and everything. So I won't you know, go into all that. It'll take ages. I probably will end up with that one outside even further away from the house. It will need waterproofing, of course. Also on the, uh, on the box, there's a aerial connector on one side, earth connector the other side. You've got coax, aerial and earth. Do connect the earth to some form of earth. What I've done as it's on the window sill there, I've earthed it to the, um, I've earthed it to the radiator, the central heating system which is grounded properly anyway. Uh, not ideal again, but better than nothing. I have got a proper RF outside earth in the back garden, but um, I haven't, I'm not too bothered. It's, this is mainly for receiving and it works well as a general coverage receiving aerial with the un, -un it works really well. And of course on long and medium wave as well. So just for example, if you've got a thousand ohms feed impedance here which is ever so high bring it down I've, I've worked this out I can't do it in my head I've worked it out on the calculator <laughs> I could cheat could I and say oh, now let me work that out thousand ohms factor of nine hundred and eleven ohms see I did that mental arithmetic hundred and eleven ohms which is a hell of a lot closer to fifty ohms than a thousand ohms 
that's what it's all about have a look online go online look up Anun and you'll find how to make one if you don't want to make one go on eBay and look up Anun and you can buy one of course if you're into serious shortwave listening serious DX then you would want a, a decent air either a dipole for the band you're interested in or some sort of multi-band aerial or the ATU as I mentioned over on the where the wire comes into the room but um, that's just giving you a rough idea for general coverage as I say this lot here I use this lot mainly on the mini whip active antenna but it's nice to have the end fed wire as well just for general coverage all right I shall leave it there I shall get on with the KW Vespa transmitter here that I'm doing up for a friend and I shall see you next time thanks for watching as always bye bye for now